welcome to god's word fellowship i'm gerald santiago and we are studying about the god of our father hallelujah hallelujah to jesus let's pray father we come to you in the name of our lord jesus father we thank you so much for your holy written word father we thank you for your wisdom your love your kindness and your great mercy father we pray you teach us your word father we pray you grant us wisdom knowledge understanding and revelation in your word your will and your love father we pray you grant us ideas concepts and insights father we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know father we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word father we pray you grant us word in due season father we thank you for answering and solutions father we thank you for words that will build our lives our families our ministries our jobs businesses finances and father we pray that you stretch out your hand to heal and their signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child jesus father we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers father in the name of our lord jesus we pray amen hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus glory be to God you know we serve a good god we serve an awesome god we serve the El Shaddai the Lord almighty our god is good our god loves us and he is willing and able to use his almighty power to help us in our life in our situations in our families hallelujah hallelujah to Jesus all right let's go to our text today go with me to Exodus chapter 3 let's read from verse 1 Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God even to Horeb the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed and Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt and when the lord saw that he turned aside to see god called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said moses moses and he said here am i and he said draw not nigh hither put off your shoes from off your feet from the place where on thou standest i'm sorry for the place where on thou standest is holy ground Moreover he said I am the God of your father underline that pass you know that part of the passage I am the God of your father and then he mentions three people as testimonies right the ancestors of Moses right they they are his fathers right the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the god of jacob and the moses hid his, hid his face for he was afraid to look upon god now notice but the bible says by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established and god is giving here three different witnesses and he is mentioning three witnesses abraham Isaac and Jacob and all of them are witnesses to the almighty power of God all of them are witnesses to the covenant that God had made with them all of them are witnesses to how God is both willing and able to help them in their lives how all of them are faith, are witnesses to the faithfulness of God right these three people have personally known god learned the ways of god and they have passed on to their families see the important thing that you need to note about all these people now all of them are considered prophets in the bible right in various capacities they did function as prophets in different levels right but um, i want you to notice this none of them had a, a church like we have today or or a ministry or they didn't have a huge audience you know to whom they can uh, teach the word of god and raise them up in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ 
you know today in order to advance the kingdom of god you know we we are speaking to our uh, uh, audience or church members or uh, christians and even non christians in public and uh, in meetings and in churches in uh, in bible studies or and uh, through media right we, we are doing a lot right to reach people and uh, but <laughs> these people they did not advance the kingdom of god the way we do the way they advanced the kingdom of god was by teaching their families they taught their families the way of god they taught their wives they taught their children they they guided their families in the ways and principles of god they guided and kept their families in the covenant of god hallelujah to jesus see that's how they advanced the kingdom of god now today we are big on um, uh, reaching people and we should we should please don't misunderstand me right all those things are great absolutely necessary and we need to do them in fact we need to do more not less right at the, but the the tragedy is we have missed the first part we have stopped teaching our families we have stopped teaching our wives our children we stop learning ourselves you know first you should know something to teach your family right <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah to jesus now hold your hand here go with me to deuteronomy okay before we go there let, let's go to go and read another part it's important go with me to luke chapter 1 you know here the angel gabriel is talking to uh zacharias and bringing him the word of god and while talking about john and his ministry this is what uh, the word of the lord was right look at this the many of the children of israel shall he turn to the lord their god and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just you know the ministry of elijah was very powerful he turned the people of god from idolatry and baal worship to serve the living god he turned the entire nation towards god right that was his ministry that was the goal of his ministry now god did mighty things through him god gave him powerful prophecies right and god accomplished great things through elijah but all the goal of all that was to turn the people of israel towards the living god right and uh, that's the assignment that is being given to john the baptist as well and in fact the anointing that was upon elijah is also going to be upon john the baptist so he is talking about turning in three different ways first he is talking about turning the children of israel to the lord their god then he is talking about turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and then the disobedient to the wisdom of the just we want to focus on the middle one right turning the hearts of the fathers to the children notice how it was an assignment in the life of john the baptist fathers and children hallelujah i want you to keep that thought in your mind now let's go to deuteronomy hallelujah to jesus glory be to god wonderful jesus deuteronomy let's first of all read chapter 6 and here let's read from verse 4 here o israel notice this is uh, after the patriarchs after abraham isaac and jacob and after joseph and, uh, and several generations later right now here he is speaking to uh, the nation now the family has become a nation <laughs> right and so he is addressing the entire nation and notice the commandment of god for the entire nation here o israel The Lord our God is one Lord and thou shall love the Lord your God with all your heart say with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might and these words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart so that's the thing first the father should learn the word of god first he should enter into a relationship with god the father like abraham did like isaac like jacob 
first the father should get into a personal relationship with god should love god and learn uh, his ways and um, grow in the knowledge of god right that's the first step and these words which i command thee this day shall be in your heart and thou shall teach them diligently underline that right thou shall teach them what diligently unto your children diligently notice whose responsibility is this primarily it is the responsibility of the father say the father it is the responsibility of the father now notice this and thou shall teach them diligently and to your children right notice he is not saying you know you thou shall teach them diligently to everybody whom you can find now he here he is focusing on the family although he is addressing the entire nation the method that god used to keep that nation strong and uh, the method that god used to keep that nation continuing in the ways of god was the family he chose the family unit do you see this right uh, we will talk more about this in detail later right but as of now i want you to uh, uh, continue to read that verse and thou shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in your house when thou walkest by the way when thou liest down and when thou risest up in other words he is saying this should be the word of god should be an integral part of the conversations between the father and the children on a daily basis on a daily basis hallelujah hallelujah to jesus verse 8 and thou shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and thy they shall be as frontlets between your eyes and thou shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates why is god giving these instructions why is he saying right some people may say brother that that sounds a little fanatic that sounds a little extreme right hey this is god teaching his people on how to stay the course how to continue to be strong in the lord how to hold fast to the teachings of god almighty and he's saying the father of the family is the key and the father has to ensure that the word of god is an integral part of the family culture the word of god is an integral part of what they hear and what they see and what they read hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus bro but you know this is the 21st century god's word endures forever god's word is right forever god's word does not need to be updated this is the way of god this is the method of god hallelujah to jesus keep these thoughts in mind you know sometimes these kind of verses can sound daunting right especially if this is new to you it can sound daunting you may think okay how am i going to do this i mean boy this sounds too high for me right it's it's very possible that many of you are feeling like that now if you are don't don't panic take these scriptures right and pray them pray father you said so i want to do this i pray that i love you with all my heart with all my soul with all my mind and with all my strength i pray that i store up your word in my heart and father i pray that you help me to develop a strong relationship with you and father i want to transfer the knowledge of your word to my children father help me help me to live this help me to teach my children diligently help me to make the word of god a part of my family culture family conversation hallelujah to jesus and you can even just pray these verses outright you don't have to add anything any other word you can just simply say father help me to teach them diligently right to my children 
and to talk to them when we sit in our house, when we walk by the way, when we lie down, when we rise up. Right? Help me to bind them as a sign upon my hand, as frontless between my eyes, and to write them upon the posts of my ha house and um, on my gates. Right? You pray you will find that the Holy Ghost will start teaching you how to do it. When you pray the word of God, the Holy Ghost will start quickening you. He will start giving you ideas, concepts, wisdom. He will give you the grace. He will give you the strength. He will help you. He will walk with you. He will be with you. And He will help you to implement it. Do you understand this? Eh? You know, if, if you're trying to do it in your strength, it's going to be rough. No. But take the help of the Holy Spirit. Pray these scriptures. And ask God for help. And He will. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, keep these thoughts in your mind and let's go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 18. Chapter 18 and let's go to verse 18. Here, God is talking to Abraham. And uh, he, before he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, he, he speaks about Abraham and his family. So let's see what he said. Verse 18, seeing that Abraham, okay, let's back up one verse. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Now, how is Abraham going to become a great and mighty nation? By the uh, almighty power of God. By the help of God. Right? What, what's Abraham's part in that? Right? Because this is a covenant relationship. God has a part. Abraham has a part. God's part is that he will use his almighty power to make sure that Abraham becomes a great and mighty nation. He will subdue opposition. He will give them long life, health, strength. God will protect them. God will deliver them. That is God's part. What is Abraham's part in this? That's what God is talking about here. Right? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and a mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. Notice this is the most outstanding characteristic of Abraham. There have been men before Abraham who have walked with God, who have had close relationship with God. But what separates Abraham from all of them is this. He didn't just stop, uh, you know, with his relationship with the Lord Jesus. Right? He went further. He brought his family into it. He taught his family the ways of God. He taught his family the faith in God. He taught his family how to listen to God's voice. He taught his family how to be obedient to God. He taught his family the covenant relationship with God. See, he didn't just uh, he didn't just say, "Oh, okay, fine. I have a good relationship with God. No, I can't do much about my children. You know, it's their choice. It's you know, everybody has their own ways. Everybody has their own opinion. I have to let them choose. You know, for themselves. You know, and I <laughs> now notice. For I know him <laughs> that he will." Command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So God is saying Abraham would command his children. Last week we closed with this, right? Some people, you know, struggle with this word command. What do you mean by command? No, this does not mean you should go around like a drill sergeant, right? Uh, yelling at everybody, Hey, stand at ease! <laughs> Attention! <laughs> Do push-ups! 50 push-ups now! Come on, man! Why are you slacking? Get up! Get up! Get, get moving! See, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> that, that, that's not the meaning of that word. He's talking about giving commandments to your children to follow God based on God's word and wisdom. Your children should have commands coming from you. See, God has given that authority for the father. God has also placed his grace and anointing upon the father to do this. 
do you understand this that there is nothing wrong with this and th- this is not a, a dictat- dictatorial way of living huh? this is not a harassment this is not torture no you are teaching your children the ways of god and this is the way god expects parents to raise children god is speaking this is not some crazy fanatic speaking this is not an extremist speaking this is god almighty speaking command your children hallelujah why so that your children can be blessed see abram is already greatly blessed right the man is walking in immense amount of blessing right <laughs> let me show you something genesis chapter 24 and i had noticed this verse one and abram was old and the well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things <laughs> i mean that there was nothing missing in abram's life by the time he came to his, this is not even close to his death you know abram lived another 35 years <laughs> even at this point of time abram was old well stricken in age he was blessed in every area right he had a great relationship with god he had a covenant with god almighty he the future of his children were secure because of the covenant of god personally he is blessed he is rich he got plenty of gold silver money business he has a great family he had sarah with whom he lived for a very long time he had isaac at this point of time you know <laughs> come on the guy was blessed in all areas nothing missing nothing broken whole complete any area you pick up right from abram's life you will find the blessing of god in it hmm? that there is nothing to point out saying okay he is good in all that he is great in all that but you know this is in them eh hey, he is suffering man it's, it's not so good it, it, it in fact it's bad you cannot say anything like that about abraham he was that blessed hallelujah to jesus right so god abraham is immensely blessed but uh, in order for his family to continue in that kind of blessing and in order for his family to grow beyond that grow further than that Isaac went further than Abraham in the blessing. We, we, we will talk about that later. Right? At this point of time, I want you to give, give you some you know, so certain ideas. I, w- I want to introduce certain ideas to you. Right? Isaac went further than Abraham in the blessing. Jacob went even further. Joseph took it to another level. See, they kept continuing in the blessing. And not just... Uh, they didn't just hold fast to what they had they grew immensely immensely see that's how you one man can become a nation if you don't grow how are you going to become a nation right so in order for abraham's family to hold fast to what um, god has taught them and uh, to continue right to be a strong blessed family they needed the word of god and they also needed to grow and increase in the blessing increase grow in the knowledge of god that is possible only when the successive generations hold fast to the teaching of god right if one generation is strong in god and the next generation is just um, right the opposite of it they walk away from god they backslide uh, and they're not walking with in a covenant relationship they don't have a, a strong uh, knowledge of god they're not obeying god uh, then there, there is a downslide right then you have to build back again and <laughs> if two three generations do that, that that that's a big loss right many things are lost when people do stuff like that See God wants you to go from strength to strength. He doesn't want you to stagnate. He doesn't want you to go downhill. No, not at all. God wants you to be strong and he conti- he wants you to continue to grow and increase like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now let me give you another um, 
example this is in jeremiah this this is one of my favorite favorite passages in the bible right in jeremiah there is this group called rechabites say that with me rechabites right you will find them in jeremiah 35 right now uh, these people were living as uh, strangers in the land and uh, their father um, had given them certain commandments right okay? I-, i want you to read the whole thing so that you will understand verse 1 the word which came unto jeremiah from the lord in the days of jehoiakim the son of josiah king of judah the background is that at this point of time israel was rebelling against god they were not obeying god's word their kings were terrible right the public were walking away from god the priests and the prophets there were many false prophets the priests themselves were not walking in the knowledge of god so this is a horrible time right in in terms of spiritually speaking and they were this close to going you know becoming captives to um, babylonia right they were going to be defeated by babylon and uh, the city is going to be destroyed and they would be taken captive and god is trying to prevent that right and he is sending them prophets and uh, jeremiah and others particularly jeremiah right uh, time and again to help them mend their ways and turn and walk away from their sin so that he can bless them instead of bringing judgment upon them and uh, so this this is the background so god wants to illustrate right god wants to give the children of israel an example of obedience and the resultant blessing right so he chooses one particular family called the rechabites when i say family i mean this is i'm not talking about one husband one wife and children no the entire descendants of uh, rechab right so um 35 verse 2 jeremiah 35 verse 2 go into the house of the rechabites and speak unto them and bring them to the house of the lord into one of the chambers and give them wine to drink right god is saying this there is a reason look at this then i I took Jasaniah the son of Jeremiah the son of Habazinia and his brethren and all his sons and the whole house of the Rechabites and I brought them into the house of the Lord into the chamber of the sons of Hanan the son of Egdalia a man of God which was by the chamber of the princes and so on okay now let's read verse 5 and I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups and I said unto them drink ye wine but they said we will drink no wine notice they didn't think they didn't ponder they didn't just have a consultation this is one of the foremost prophets of god standing before them and saying drink wine right jeremiah is not something you you is not someone whom you want to neglect or insult or you know just say mm, i don't care what you have to say huh? this is an important man in the nation right he is a mighty prophet and people know jeremiah at this point of time and uh, so when he is saying this um, they didn't blink they immediately said but they said we will drink no wine notice nobody in the family is is, uh, is um uh, divided in this there is no uh, contrary opinion it's not like somewhere mm, I, i i i don't want to some are saying i want to but i don't know i i don't care what you guys think i'm going to drink no that there, there is no such divided opinion in there everybody is in sync every one of them in one voice they they are united in this right they said we will drink no wine for jonadab the son of rechab our father commanded us at one point of time one of the descendants of um, um rechab called jonadab commanded the family not just one person the entire family saying you shall drink no wine neither you nor your sons forever i don't want to go into the other parts of it not relevant to us right so they said verse 8 thus have you obeyed the voice of jonadab the son of rechab our father in all that he has charged us to drink no wine in all of our days we our wives our sons nor our daughters right and then move to verse um, 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 12. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction to hearken to my word, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine or performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you hearken not unto me. Notice, God is, 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 is displaying this family as an example to his covenant people. Right? This is like Ruth, you know, when, when the entire you know, people of Israel were, were moving into some degraded ways. <laughs> Ruth was walking in the ways of Abraham. That's why she was. She's there in the uh, Bible. Right? Here, the entire nation of uh, the kingdom of Judah is moving away from God, right? and God is holding up this family as an example. Why did He hold them up as as, as examples? Because they obeyed the commandments of their father. Notice again, it is a command of the father. The father taught the the, the family a certain way. And it was kept. The Holy Ghost is testifying. This is not somebody else testifying. The Holy Ghost is saying. The Holy Ghost. Right? The Almighty God is testifying about this family. Right? <laughs> the words of the son of... Re uh, the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Right? Now notice the blessing of this. Go to the very last part of that chapter, verse 18. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonathan your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according to all that he has commanded you, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonathan the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. What a privilege. What a blessing. Right? Their family would stand. There would be men in their family to always stand before God. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's why it's so important for the fathers to take your place in your family and teach your family and command your children in the ways of God. We are not talking about, you know, abusing children. Right now, we are teaching them the ways of God, commanding them to walk in the ways of God so that they can be blessed and that so that they can do well in their life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please do share our audio messages with your friends, family, relatives, co-workers, neighbors, people who need the word, people who love the word. Uh, servants of God, saints, share it with them. God will bless you. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.